millions upon millions of children are laid alone, suffering, starving, with bed sores, confused in pain, mentally, physically, emotionally, unable to talk, unable to get up and walk away, unable to call for help. And so a child incarnates in a body which is defective, in a world which is defective. And they have parents who are defective. And they keep them alive, not out of love and compassion, but out of fear that they will be prosecuted for infanticide if they don't. And these children are there in this bubble, this cocoon of a frequency of suffering like you have never imagined. This village, it will start the journey in collective human consciousness for us to recognize and see that these millions of invisible children are here. And perhaps we might get up and go to war for them and set them free. And in setting free one child, you begin to set free fallen consciousness for all of man. The most feared sacred knowledge is that which would bring Christianity up from its knees and into the power that Yeshua promised. Billions of people are Christian. Billions. How many of those are able to say that as Yeshua promised, those who follow these signs and wonders they will have, they will cast out devils, they will heal the sick, they will pray in a new tongue. Praying in a new tongue is a manifestation through the human organism that we all are, that allows us to harmonically attune with the Creator. We have been railroaded by misconceptions in religion that leave man in a very peculiar spot where we pray to God and expect God to obey our bidding. God does not work for man. God works in man, through man. We must learn that force to be present in ourselves and there we must command the power of the Creator with our spoken word, with our intention. And we must speak to the demons of the world, the problems of the world, the suffering of the world directly about the authority and the power, with the authority and the power of Creator. Most are speaking to the Creator about their problems. And here, the organism is not the channel that it can be for that Christic power, that power of the cosmos, of the Creator. The sacred secretion is the most feared knowledge by the fallen ones. They are terrified of it, beyond all things. And it is not that we must get caught that this part of your anatomy is going to save you, that this part of your anatomy is that which you must seek to have. It is that this element of the anatomy of man that has been restricted by the fallen ones and our slave masters is the doorway, the doorway for you to step forward into the presence of the living God and into the power and the obviousness that I speak of. The obviousness that that power must be commanded through you speaking to the demons and your problems in this world with the power of God, not to God about the problem. This is an alteration in human consciousness to raise us into the power of the spiritual rebirth that Yeshua pointed at. 
and Christianity needs this. They need it. They need to understand the metaphorical level of the scripture. They need to understand that there is correlation between the man Yeshua and the anointing, the sacred anointing within you. Without the anointing rising in the body, the alteration of the frequency of the mind, movement into the higher mind, into spirit away from flesh. Without that, mankind lives eternally in a state of separation from Creator. And the fallen ones are aware that this substance, this beautiful part of the anatomy of man, that was originally placed in the Eden operating system in a plentiful abundance, they understood that it had to be restricted. They had to restrict that substance to restrict mankind's connection to the Creator. And so it is that the substance has been restricted by the Moon Matrix, a, a, a video that I've done in depth meaning our connection to the living God and its guidance and its power has been restricted through the restriction of the doorway to it, which is the anointing within us. The sacred secretion is as follows. Due to the interference of the fallen when the moon enters your birth sign, I am born in Aries. I'm born March 30th. Therefore, when the moon enters Aries, the anatomy, the body which is influenced by the, the stars around you, the body which is afflicted with the fallen operating system or the, the higher dimensional slave technology within us, it is animated to birth the holy anointing within you, the birth of consciousness the birth of the Christic substance within all of man, the sacred secretion, the chrism, the ictos. It is secreted from the claustrum of your brain. It then travels your 33 vertebrae. As it travels down, it meets the sacred place or your sacral plexus, which is five fused vertebrae, and it begins its return journey. As it passes through the 33 vertebrae, it reaches the hyperglossal. The hyperglossal of the 12th cranial nerve has within it a pyramid structure and an olive structure. And thus we get the misconception that you must be anointed with the oil of the olive or the olive oil. And we have preachers around the world rubbing olive oil on people's foreheads. But the real power that we need is not these traditions anymore. It is to raise the Christ in man and let them have the true anointing of the oil that passes through the olive of the twelfth cranial nerve. For there you enter the higher mind. There you gain discipline over the world. There you begin to overcome the world. As that continues its journey, it enters the thalamus area of your brain. And it sits for two and a half days in the tomb of your skull, in the thalamus. After that time of gestation, it resurrects itself and it stimulates the pituitary and the pineal and the whole mind of man is activated away from personal history, personal meanness, selfish will, selfish desire into a frequency state that can't even abide the sight of lies, deception and scheming. Such is the, the subtlety, the, the sensitiveness of this substance which is bringing forward the presence of the Holy Spirit in your life that even a little bit of sin, a little bit of corruption will pollute the whole thing. The pituitary and the pineal secrete DMT and serotonin. One is amber, one is milky. The secretion was encoded in our scripture. The secretion travels the 33 vertebrae Yeshua, the Christ, travels 33 years in the world. At the age of 33, Yeshua is crucified in Golgotha. Golgotha means the place of the skull. Inside the body, at the 33rd vertebrae, the secretion is crucified between the pituitary and pineal inside your skull. 
Yeshua is wounded five times on the cross, the final wound being the spear in the ribs. The five fused vertebrae give birth to the Christ seed in man that meets with the chrism that is secreted from the colostrum. The five also denotes that you overcome the five senses of yourself. You must. You can't live in obedience to their will. When you overcome the five senses within you, you conquer the flesh. The temple of God is the body and it must be conquered. All around the world we know this, that there's a mark in many religions on the brow. And Christianity has lost track of the truth. For David slayed Goliath by taking five rounded stones, overcoming the five senses, and striking the giant here. For the five senses were overcome, the essence of man, the vitality, is used for the righteousness, the will of God, and therefore climbs the body and sits here in the center of the temple of God, not in the lower regions where chases the comfortable prison cell of worldly desire. The secretion causes the, the movement of serotonin and DMT, the land flowing with milk and honey, the promised land, an amber substance, a milky substance. It is all the anatomy that we are missing here. And here is the power of man. Here is the power of man. For when a human being understands what is taking place in them, when they understand anatomically that that secretion must be nurtured and that God is not a monster who has a temperament that says, I'll put a limited finite amount. So the way by which you can feel and hear me is very narrow, for narrow is the way and few will find it. This was not God's plan. Eden operating system, we had more of the chrism. We had more of the sacred secretion. The fallen operating system, the knowledge of good and evil operating system that drags us into duality and into war and perversion and all else. It is reliant upon multiple systems that the fallen ones created, including the restriction of the secretion. Biblically speaking, what I am saying is, is written in the scripture. It is referenced often. You are anointed with the oil of gladness above your peers, for you have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. There is in Isaiah the anointing that breaks the yoke of God. This is the inner anointing within man that takes him away from the flesh, the sin body, and into the higher dimensions whilst still having a body that functions in the fallen world. When you achieve this and you understand this, you will become united in power with the Christ. And this is what is feared the most. And that's why it's suppressed. And that's why this sacred knowledge is encoded in scripture. Because the fallen ones don't have such a mind as a mystic for they have distanced themselves from creator. We have a fallen mind. And therefore we take all scripture and we literalize it. And if anyone challenges that it's purely literal and says it's not, there's more to it. The fallen nature, as it has built using hardware of the fall within it, an image of self that knows, feels threatened. And it rebels against those who state that there is more depth to this. To try to share with another man in this world that they didn't fully understand the religion they were studying is difficult. For the hurdles come in that we all face. Men are arrogant and we do not want to be shown later in life that we were wrong about something, that there's more to it. Men are very proud and so we want to make sure the image of self that we have paraded around in the world with confidence for the last however many decades is what we are. And when someone challenges it and says that's wonderful but there's more to it and you missed it, they need to, mankind, to hear that within religious spheres, overcome all of the fallen elements of self to say, okay, in humility, perhaps I wasn't clear and didn't fully know. In the scripture, there is a wonderful verse that I want to read. This verse shows you everything I am saying and why they fear this. The elite fear it. 
the, those who are in allegiance with the fallen ones, they fear this desperately and they will try to annihilate anybody carrying this message by whatever means they can. This is the truth of the power of Christ. And it is not some external force, it is something that must be brought into your life, into yourselves. And the doorway to that is elevating the secretion which is ultimately edifying your life in purity. 1 John 2.27 It reads this, As for you, the anointing you received from him remains in you. And you do not need anyone to teach you. But as his anointing teaches you about all things, and as that anointing is real and not counterfeit, just as it is taught you, you will remain in Christ. The anointing is in you, and once it's with you, you do not need anyone to teach you. What that means is when man is empowered with the living God. The living God will guide man based on their individual current state of situation, consciousness state of development, conscious state of development, will lead the man to the right information, on the right hour, on the right day. Be it from another human, be it from a book, be it from revelation or download, be it from a child, be it from the words of a stranger. When the anointing is set, the living God can determine where you go throughout your day and knows what is required by its child to awaken fully and to become empowered fully. And so when that anointing is present, the intermediary is pointed at with the term Holy Spirit. The only guru man needs is that. There are gurus and teachers in the world that can point you back to this place within you. And this is beautiful and it's wonderful. But this is not about creating a spiritual image of self. This is not about creating a spiritual community in, in beautiful parts of the world. This is about you getting through your daily chores and life and responsibilities with the guidance of a loving God clear crystal clear as if a friend with great wisdom and all-knowingness is with you and you must follow that and understand that you are not all-knowing and so now you touch the walk of faith the anointing abideth in you it is the secretion the fallen ones fear this and the reason they fear it is simple the majority of men live through programming and through the higher dimensional slave technology or the knowledge of good and evil operating system that we are dwelling within. The majority of men and women are living in a reactory state to the plans of the enemy. The fallen ones have powerful minions in this world, corrupt leaders, corrupt bankers, corrupt corporations, they have a lot of swing. For humanity loves to live in its fallen state and in its fallen state it can be influenced by them. That means that in this spiritual war which we are in, the majority of men wait for the plans of the enemy and then respond to them. That means that the enemy knows that you are going to be within a certain sphere of response. If we push this species in this way, they will respond this percentage like this, this percentage in that manner, and this percentage in that manner, etc. We are living that way. We feel like we are in a, a, a washing machine or in some sort of crazy marathon of civilization that never ends where it's just war and corruption and craziness and separation and divide and deep down the majority of people are feeling like they are not at home in that for these are manufactured events to take the truth of what we are and bring it into the catchment, the frequency range of the fallen ones. If therefore humanity gets off its knees 
which we must. If we get off of our knees and we can hear the living God with absolute clarity, this means that the living God's plans become that which the enemy's minions need to react to. And you cannot win a war by reacting to the strategy of the enemy alone. You must be taking commands from a very skilled, wise, knowing general. And Christ is that general. And when you use terms like this, people think of kicking down doors or grabbing a machete or grabbing a gun and going to war and going to fight. And, and you get this very aggravated doing energy born in man when you use these terminologies. But the, the spiritual war we are in, the Christ will call on you not to go in with anger and malice, but to stay stable, having overcome the world, to receive the guidance. And there will be times where your masculine energy is called upon to break down a door. And there will be times where your feminine energy is called upon to nurture a dying child in our instance. There will be times where the Christ calls on different energies within you of all different spectrums. But those energies will never be your master. They will never be the driving force of your life, for you are receiving direct guidance from the living God, which we have pointed at most commonly in this community with the term Christ. And that living God is not born inside words and thoughts, it's born in the spaces in between. Words and thoughts can point you back towards it. But ultimately, here and now, God so guides the humble. And humility is not a structure or an image in the mind. Humility is a human organism that stays lovingly aware in this present moment of all that is and awaits the guidance of the Creator. That's it. It's an emptiness that has been spoken of by all of the mystics of the world. And in that emptiness you awaken the connection with the Christ. And if your life is in order and you are not trying to do this for 30 minutes a day, or you're not trying to live a life in the world and then go and do this because it's a, of spiritual interest, it is about an alteration of the entire way of life where you will not betray reality where you will allow the living God to determine where you go and you allow all of the dreams and desires you held as a personal meanness and a personal history and a nationality and a career or whatever identity your brain was running with all of those desires and dreams they fade away and are replaced with the dream of God the desire of God for your life which is your highest good it is why you were created your creator wishes to reveal that to you and the doorway is the secretion and Christianity needs to learn this for I in the last weeks have witnessed even religious leaders people leading those around us that need to find God people in positions of authority I have seen them with their egos being pushed by the enemy I have watched as a child died in a horrendous way because they restricted his treatment due to the arrogance of their religious egos, due to the arrogance of their, their other egoic structures within themselves. Those who were supposed to lead man to Christ, creating suffering in this world because they don't understand the scripture and they were taught wrong. And it is a time where some of us have come into this world to share the truth and to remind us all that snakes don't talk and that yes, we have a story of Adam and Eve in a garden, but doesn't it make more sense that it seems you split the rib from Adam and you start the multiplication of all life, that you split the electron from Adam, that you start the multiplication of all life, that the tribe of Judah camps in the east and its number is 186,400. The tribe of Judah was called the tribe of light. The speed of light in a vacuum is 186,400 meters per second, or miles per second, forgive me. I'm no scientist. But I do know that the scripture is filled with 
various giveaways trying to alert you to the truth. And the sacred secretion is part of that. And you cannot sidestep it. And therefore you must live righteously. You must obey the law of Christ. You must. For if not, you will not have the anatomy of the higher mind. And when that happens, the fallen world will have a frequency grip on you that you can't overcome with your own will and courage. But when you separate from its frequency grip, it can't even tempt you. It can't even call on you. For you have awoken into your power. Not only to attend church on a Sunday and hear about all these magical miracles that took place by the Son of God and His followers, but for them to start taking place through you as a follower. For you to go to war with these higher dimensional entities that are burdening humanity. To go to war with the demons that are feeding and cackling on your, your children and your loved ones' weaknesses. To go to war and build structures for those who are living in eternal suffering for no good reason in this world. To heal. To see the manifestation in human form of the praying in tongues which is spoken of in Christianity frequently. And it is real. It's a manifestation that takes the whole of your brain and your body and even your speech and starts harmonically attuning you with the Creator. And as you reach into harmonic attunement, Creator will say, go this way and do this and you will have no idea why you're going that way or why you're doing this, but you will do it. For in faith you will be obedient and you will follow blindly and you will watch as miracles take place in the world because you follow that faith. And none of this is earned. You see, the one that would like to earn it is the knowledge of good and evil operating system. It's a personal meanness. The activation of it to try and earn the presence of God, to try and earn the power of Christ, is the activation of a frequency where Christ can't speak. For the carnal mind is enmity to the laws of God. Thought is enmity to the laws of God. God's law stimulates you without thought and then thought is used by that foundation. Intelligence is used by that foundation. But most people live in a surface level so they analyze bits of information and allow that to then animate the brain. And we live in madness because of it. Because we have, we have lost our power. We've lost our power. And there are those who do nothing for the kingdom of God. Those that sit at home watching their Netflix, watching their preachers on an evening, eating every day, never fasting. And they will judge this as New Age woo. But I am here to stand in the authority of truth and tell you this is biblical. This is Christian. This is what Christ taught and some of us are here to share it at this time. The anointing within you is the most feared knowledge of the fallen ones. For that anointing will give birth to your connection to the living God. And that means that God can have an army guided by direct communication with the General, the Christ. And when that happens, when that takes place, the plans of God, which the enemy cannot predict, cannot control, cannot second guess, begin to take a hold in this world and you will watch as the enemy is desperately shooting everything it can at those bringing forth these new ideas and plans and creation codes from the Creator. To try and derail them, to, to, to hurt them, to make them lose faith. And the more they hit you, the more love and nourishment and faith and belief Creator gives you. And with it, your programming ability becomes higher and you overcome the world even more. The anointing is the doorway to God. And none will go to the Father unless through that anointing. I guarantee you that. That's a fact. That's a fact of our reality. And we have churches and Bibles everywhere. 
and nobody knows it. It's time. It's time for it to take a hold. It's time for us to get off our knees. It's time for us to liberate the fallen world from the technology of the fall, which is incomparable to man's unification with the power of spirit. God bless, guys.